Hi, this is Gabe from FluentForever.com. In these three videos, I'm going to show you the bare essentials of German phonetics and spelling. If you're using one of my pronunciation trainers, don't worry about memorizing any of this. The trainer will do that for you. Just watch and pay attention. Everything you see here will show up sooner or later within the trainer. I'll be going through German using the International Phonetic Alphabet, or IPA. This lets us simplify our discussion a lot, since I only need to talk about 39 symbols, many of which you know already, instead of trying to wade through nearly 150 spelling rules. So, that being said, let's get started. We'll break this discussion up into three parts. The first will cover the German consonants, the second will cover the vowels, and the third will cover a few of German's spelling rules. So, German has 22 consonants, and if you speak English, around 14 of these are relatively familiar sounds and familiar symbols. Five are relatively familiar sounds with kind of new symbols, and only three of these consonants are really new. So we'll start with the easy ones. German has B as in Bär, D as in Dreieck, F as in Feder, G as in Glocke, H as in Helm, K as in Kamin, M as in Magnet, N as in Nagel, P as in Papagei, S as in Kasse, T as in Tulpe, V as in Vase, and Z as in Socke. And we'll add one more symbol to this mix, which is German's L. L, as in Lippenstift. It's a familiar symbol in IPA, a lowercase l, but it sounds a bit different from English. In English, when we say a word like leap, for instance, the back and front of your tongue both come up towards the roof of your mouth. Leap. But in German, only the tip of your tongue will come up, and it reaches just behind your front upper teeth. Leap. English has leap. German, leap. Leap, leap. All right. So next, uh, we have five relatively new symbols with mostly familiar sounds. So first, this symbol. Uh, this symbol looks like a lowercase j, but is in fact German's j, as in yacht, or same symbol as in English as u or yellow or yacht. In some German dialects, you'll hear a bit more grit to it than in English. You'll hear ja, yacht with the middle of the tongue really pressed up against the roof of the mouth. Ja. But in standard German, it's really the same as it is in English. Ja, you, jacht, jat, ja. Um, our next symbol. Uh, this is a sort of squiggly Z, Z, and it shows up in words that German has stolen from French, like genie or jongleur. Uh, English uses it in similarly French words like beige or rouge, so you have je as in jongleur. So next, we have ng, which looks like an elongated n, and it shows up in German words like lang, zinger, and angel. English uses it in words like king and sing. It's basically just an n that you make with the back of your tongue instead of the front. Uh, but note that in some dialects of English, we sometimes pair it with a g, a g sound, and so we'll say singer and finger, where in German they don't. They say zinger and finger, and there's really no g in there at all. Finger. Next up, we have sh, which looks like a stretched out s, and it shows up in German words like shu, and English words like shu. Uh, this symbol is the same in both English and German, although if you really listen carefully, uh, the German version does sound a little bit different. Uh, the tongue tends to pull back a little further into the mouth, and so instead of English is sh, you get sh. So an English speaker would say, I want to shoe shine, or a German speaker might say, I want to shoe shine, shoe shine. Schuschein. The last of our five new symbols is known as a glottal stop. It looks like a question mark without the dot on the bottom. And it's what happens when your vocal cords come together all the way and then pop open. It makes this sound. <laughs> we use it in English, actually. Uh, we use it before words that start in vowels and phrases like uh-oh and it is true. Uh, but in English, we don't use it nearly as consistently as the Germans do. It's acceptable to say something in English like, it is an apple, 
And it'd honestly feel a bit unnatural to stick glottal stops before all of those words. It is an apple. Uh, but in German, uh, German tends to be more intense than English, and so they tend to use them all the time. Uh, they don't say something like, er ist ein arbeitsloser Athlet. They say, er ist ein arbeitsloser Athlet. Uh, it gives the whole language a neat kind of guttural feel. So, moving on. Um, I wanted to mention three of German's consonant clusters, which show up whenever you stick two consonants right next to each other. Uh, the first one will be very familiar. It's what happens when you stick a t and a sh together. You get ch. Uh, it shows up in German words like much and English words like child. Uh, the other two consonant clusters are simple, but a little less familiar. Uh, first, if you stick a p and a f together, you get pf, as in pfeil and pfand. Uh, and second, if you stick a t and a s together, you get ts, as in zahl or zimmer. And we're mostly through. We have three last sounds and symbols to learn. The first is the German R, r as in ratte. It's produced using the back of your tongue, which pulls back all the way behind where you pronounce g. Ga, 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 ra, ra, ra. Uh, if you're familiar with French IPA, you might notice that the symbol here is a right side up capital R, where it was an upside down R in French. Uh, this is mostly a matter of convention. The consonants, honestly, are basically the same. Um, when all goes well when pronouncing this consonant, your uvula, that thing that hangs down to the back of your throat, will vibrate against your tongue. Ra, ra. Um, as always, the more familiar your ear gets with this sound, the easier it will be to produce, but that won't necessarily make it easy. Uh, this consonant really tripped me up when I first learned it. I basically went around gargling for a whole summer and then eventually it started working well. Um, so here's our next consonant. It looks like a capital X, but it's like a few millimeters lower than it should be. Uh, and this is ch, as in Bach. Uh, it's made in the exact same spot as that German R. Your tongue raises up all the way in the back behind G, and as that space gets smaller and smaller between your tongue and your uvula, you get ah. Uh, for many, this one tends to be a bit easier than Germans are. People seem to have an easier time kind of choking themselves with their tongue than gargling for some reason. So, we have one last consonant. Uh, this is German's sh, as in Licht. Um, and it uses the symbol of a C with a little tail on it, the C C D. Um, earlier, I introduced you to German's y and told you how some people like to really constrict that sound and say y, yeah, y. Yeah. Uh, this last consonant, sh, sh, is made in that exact same spot. You take the tongue position of a y, like in you or ya or yacht, uh, where the middle of your tongue is near the roof of your mouth, and then you bring your tongue up even further, almost pushing against the roof of your mouth, and then you just sort of squeeze air through that space to make a kind of hissing sound. And those are all of the German consonants. So let's take a moment to review. We have 13 familiar sounds with familiar IPA symbols. There's b as in bear, d as in Dreieck, F as in Feder, G as in Glocke, H as in Helm, K as in Kamin, M as in Magnet, N as in Nagel, P as in Papagei, S as in Kasse, T as in Tulpe, V as in Vase, and Z as in Socke. And to add one more to these, we have L as in Lippenstift, which uses just the front of the tongue, rather than English's front and back. Lippenstift. We have five new symbols with relatively familiar sounds. There is J as in Yacht, J as in Jongleur, N as in Angel, Sch as in Schuh, as in Arbeitsloser Athlet. And we have three new sounds. German's R as in Ratte, produced all the way in the back of the throat where you gargle. There's German's ch as in Bach, produced in that exact same spot. And German's sh as in Licht, produced right in the middle of the mouth, using the middle of the tongue. And that is it for German consonants. Next up, the German vowels.